Uh, for a portion of my time, I'm a guest researcher at the CDC uh, Division of HIV AIDS Prevention, and a close colleague of mine who I work with there was actually detailed to the Dengue branch to work on Zika and is one of the two PIs for that project. So as she got started to work on this, some issues came up that sort of required expertise in the uh, design of cohort studies, which is something that our group here at Emory uh, has developed special expertise in. And so we're trying to understand for people that are recently infected with Zika, uh, what is the course of infection look like for them in the weeks and months after infection. So we've developed a lot of procedures for setting up cohort studies in terms of how uh, we interact with participants, protocols for sort of how a study visit should go, how to set up a research clinic space, and then also how to manage the study data. So how do we design database systems, uh, reports, and sort of just a lot of the nuts and bolts of how these kind of studies should work. And so we've really lent them a lot of our expertise um, in terms of reviewing their documents, sharing a lot of the procedures and documents that we have, sharing computer code. And so it's really just sort of a symbiotic relationship where we're really sharing, just sort of doing a lot of sharing of what we do here at Emory. I would say that the primary people who are at risk for contracting Zika infection are people who are in areas of active mosquito transmission of Zika. And so right now in the mainland United States, we don't really have any uh, documented mosquito transmission of Zika. Really, it's mostly the, the real concern is for people who are traveling to areas where there is circulating mosquitoes with Zika. And then uh, people who have sex with people who have recently traveled to those areas would be at risk as well. We know that Zika persists uh, in the blood for probably up to about a week. Um, so that would sort of be the window of opportunity for spread by mosquitoes. What's less clear is how long Zika persists in other bodily fluids. Uh, because it is conceivable that people may be able to transmit sexually for some time after, that they're, after the period where they're not able to transmit to mosquitoes. So for most cases, uh, at least according to what CDC is saying, that m most cases of Zika are probably asymptomatic without symptoms. For the small minority of people that do have sy symptoms, most commonly they're very sort of nonspecific uh, rash, fever, joint pain, uh, red eyes. Uh, those are sort of the, the symptoms that people are expressing. F few people have symptoms that are really severe enough to maybe require hospitalization.